Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of DCA Takedown. This is the final one before All or Nothing, and this is D Wall here with you on commentary tonight. And what a show we have set up for you tonight! As the Destiny Championship will be on the line as Kenshin finally gets his shot one on one with Mr. Amazing Alexander Washington later on tonight, and that is promising to be one heck of a match but right now enough with the fan with no more fanfare no more uh you know interruptions we're getting right into our first match of the night uh kira yuki Moore is making her way out to the ring right now getting set for one-on-one -on -one action and you know akira is looking forward to this one because she has made it clear she wants to be women's champion but she has to work her way up just like every other woman on the roster. And she's going to look to do that in this matchup right here. Akira with a great smile on her face like always. She's always very, very friendly in the locker room. Wanting to learn more about America and everything. Looking to get more into that American style of wrestling. And her older brother... Talker is, is really helping her out with all that, really helping her get used to DCA, really helping her to make more friends in the locker room, and that's what a brother's supposed to do, you know, a brother's supposed to be there for you whenever you need him, and for the younger sister of Takeru, that is certainly true in that regard, and Akira looking forward to her contest here tonight looking through my notes here I don't know who she's facing it doesn't say her who, who her opponent is but I'm sure whoever it is is gonna have one heck of a test facing off against Akira right now and Akira waiting patiently for wait a minute what hold on wait a minute I just looked up and I just look up for a split second and who is this who's this woman in the ring attacking Akira I don't even know where she came from. What the, what the hell is going on here? This woman, oh, when I need the face, this woman coming out of nowhere, attacking Akira, and now trying to keep her down the corner and another knee of the face. This is an unprovoked attack, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know where she came from. I don't know who this woman is, but she is attacking Akira, but for what reason? And now what? Oh my god! Super kick right to the face. And now what's she going? What? Why isn't anyone coming out here to do anything about this? Now she's got a trash can. Akira has no idea where she... Oh wait, never mind. I think Akira is getting her wits about her now. Kick right to the head. And Akira's not going to take any of this lying down. That's for sure. Akira now fighting back with everything she has. Whipped in the corner. Akira now drop kick. The fans trying to will her back on against this woman. I don't know who she is. I don't know. And oh my God, what a clothesline. I, I don't know who this woman is, but she just nearly took Akira's head off. And now a DDT. I don't know. I don't know what in the world's going on here, ladies and gentlemen. I just look up for one moment, and then this woman, this red-haired woman, coming out of nowhere, possibly from the crowd, maybe under the ring. I don't really know. And attacking Akira from behind. No motive. No. No explanation. I don't know. Akira is out cold, ladies and gentlemen. After that clothesline, I, I don't. Somebody needs to get out here and stop this. Somebody needs to come out here and do something about this. This is an unprovoked attack. And I don't understand. Oh, no. What is this now? Oh! Almost on that trash can. Thank God it got out. Thank God it slid under. But I don't think she's finished. Oh, no. Oh, no. Jesus. Fa 
Ice Buster on the trash can. Come on now, you. I, I don't know what the heck. I don't know what the hell this is all about here, ladies and gentlemen. I am just completely disgusted. Now what is this? This submission hold. You, Akira's already out cold. The referee begging with this woman to, to stop. Akira, she's not moving, folks. She's not moving at all. We, we need to get some help out here. We need to get some damn help out here. Somebody come out. Somebody get out here. Akira, she is. I, she doesn't know where she's at. Akira just barely has anything left at this point. And the woman just staring at her. Glaring at her handiwork. And now what? Oh, no. What is this? Oh! I don't know who this woman thinks she is. But she just, what does she, what does she want? What is, she, what was this all about? Ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and after that dis that sickening display, hopefully we can get on to more important matters as Justin Roberts is backstage with the number one contender for the women's title, Morgan Raincroft. Well, there's some strong words from Morgan Raincroft. But now we're getting ready for this match. Jordan Sylvia making his way out to the ring. And he is going to take on Tyler Parks here tonight. And this man, Jordan Sylvia, has been the, the center of a lot of controversy over the past few months in DCA. I mean, at first... She was supposed he was supposedly Shazine's pet project, hit her greatest asset, and now he's been ousted by Shazine. He's been ousted by everyone who he thought was there for him, and now he's all alone 
Shazim basically said a few episodes ago, don't ask for my help anymore because you're not going to get it. And at this point, it's just Jordan versus the world. And more importantly, it's Jordan versus Malik at all or nothing. 20 minutes, no holds barred, Iron Man rules. But tonight, he's going to have to go through this man who also has a great, great chance at all or nothing. The must see of DCA, Mr. Must See, Tyler Parks, who will face Xavier of the change for the gateway to heaven briefcase at all or nothing and this man is the last well one of the last chances to keep the change away from our big cpv our last one of the season our last mega show this man tyler parks could possibly walk into revelations last rights in the main event excuse me ladies and gentlemen having some mic problems here but nonetheless tyler parks is the last shot along with jacob cross who will get his rematch against john black rose for the dca world title at Rev all or nothing excuse me and then at revelations we could see hopefully we see tyler parks versus jacob cross that's a main event that i would love to see for our last show that is a well-deserved main event not the change after what the change have done, I know I'm trying to be, I know I'm supposed to be an unbiased commentator here, but let's be honest. Who in the, their right mind, after everything the change have done, who in their right mind would actually want to see the change in the main event in any way, shape, or form? Because I won't. And neither does the roster in the back. This man, Tyler Parks, he's been through a lot this season, but he has a chance to make all of that up in one night at all or nothing by taking that gateway to heaven briefcase and if i'm tyler parks and i know i have that shot i'm going to do everything and anything in my power to make sure that xavier does not walk out as the gateway to heaven briefcase winners and as you see here tyler parks and jordan sylvia going at it here one on one this should be a great matchup to see a lot of great matches are on the dock, on the dock as, it, as it will, for all or nothing. We already know that Jordan Sylvia will face Malik Brown one more time. This time, however, it will be a 20-minute no-holds-barred Iron Man match. As you see, Tyler immediately going right to the sharpshooter. That did not take long at all. That only took about a minute. And Jordan... Getting out of it, Tyler forced to break the hold. And now, look at this. What a suplex. And this is the kind of offense that Tyler's going to have to bring to all or nothing. Another suplex. Tyler Parks, very athletic in the ring. Former amateur wrestler. He knows what it takes to get the job done. You don't want to mat wrestle with Tyler Parks, that's for sure. But Jordan now... Irish whip into the row, into the corner, and a big splash. Jordan Sylvia has proven that he's no slouch either, though. Many people criticized him early in the season for having minimal training and any of that stuff. And Malik has been taunting him over and over again about the truest statement of all that has haunted Jordan his entire career. Oh, my goodness. This has haunted Jordan his entire career that his father paid off guys 50 bucks a night to make sure that Jordan looked good in his early career and Jordan has spent every single day living that down and trying to live his own legacy but instead he lives his legacy through his father and his mother's legacy but Jordan knows that's not going to cut it and that's why I believe he's going after Malik Brown to make his own statement, to make his own mark here in the company. Jordan said, Jordan said that he deserves to be DCA champion, but this all started at, at uh, Redemption 
when Jordan and Sylvia took too much time focusing on Malik Brown to capitalize on Jacob Cross and he lost his opportunity at the DCA title but then on takedown 20 nice face buster on the floor takedown 20 he got his rematch but again he was focused too much on Malik Brown as you see Jordan with a huge elbow drop he was focused too much on Malik Malik's music hit Jordan got distracted and oh no oh, a neck breaker on the chair Jordan Sylvia Jordan Sylvia is starting to send a message straight to Malik Brown here. I don't think Tyler's had any offense at all ever since he got drilled into those ring stairs. And Tyler Parks is in deep, deep trouble here. I did not like his chances and a Russian leg sweep on the chair now. And look at him gloating about it. Telling these fans exactly how he feels. And Tyler now, I don't think he knows where he is. And this is not good for Tyler Parks either. Huge elbow. This is not good for Tyler. Just a few days shy of all or nothing. That's for sure. Because he cannot afford an injury. Not coming. Not being so close to the main event of Revelations. And another back suplex on the chair. Jordan Sylvia is just has been relentless here and he has been ever since this whole thing with Malik started we he brought out something that we didn't think he had at gateway to heaven and ever since then he's been more vicious he's been more violent he's been more ruthless than I've ever seen him in his career Malik said that Jordan didn't have a violent bone in his body but he showed he did at gateway to heaven and he showed it on the last episode when he kicked Malik Brown's head against the ring post. And now Tyler Park. Oh no. Now he's going to do the same thing to Tyler. Come on now Jordan. This is not what it needs. Oh my goodness. The same thing Malik did to him twice at Gateway to Heaven. The same thing Jordan did to Malik last episode. He just did it to Tyler Parks. And you got to believe that is just a straight up message. A clear message straight to Malik Brown. That's what that was all about. And J Tyler's got to be out of it. That's it. Jordan Sylvia sending a message that he is ready for all or nothing that this isn't the same Jordan that was at gateway to heaven this isn't the same Jordan Sylvia that Malik said didn't have a violent bone in his body this isn't the same Jordan that Malik said wasn't ready that wasn't trained that was paid off to look good that his dad paid people off to look good this is a new violent vicious Jordan Sylvia and if we see that at all or nothing Jordan Sylvia could end up beating Malik Brown in that 20 minute no holds barred Iron Man match ladies and gentlemen we'll have to take a break we'll be right back after this
Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And it looks like Shazine Freya is making her way out to the ring right now. And this woman has been the center of a lot of talk in DCA lately, especially after what she said in an official statement she sent to the DCA offices a few days ago, saying that she basically has saved women's wrestling, has saved virtual wrestling itself, and that the past few months, everything that's happened, she should be getting thanked for. And basically just calling out a bunch of different leagues saying that they're not as good as the change, that they she dares them to stop the change. I don't know what that's all about, but Now that's not nice. That's not even called for. Well, Suzine has made her point clear, it seems. She said she, people wanted an open challenge. Well, I guess she just got that. I guess she just did it. And I, I don't know if this is a wise move on Shazine's part or not, but hey, more power to her, I guess. I don't know. Shazine might be biting off a little bit more than she could chew in this exchange.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are back to takedown, and you see Shazine's talking in the back to somebody, and what the heck is she looking at? What in the world? What? Who is, who is she looking at? Who is Shazine? Shazine looks like she's seen a ghost, and I don't even know who. What? I don't even know who. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I... I don't know. I don't know what to say here. But, ladies and gentlemen, let's go back to the last episode when Malik Brown was in the ring, and he had something to say about Jordan Sylvia and about, well, everything that's been happening in DCA. He was able to speak his mind... And what happened next, I don't even, it was just too gruesome to, for me to watch. And speaking of rising up and claiming a destiny, Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. Jordan. The sad fool who met his demise at the hands of a man who came in 100% focus. You, you know, Jordan, a lot of people that I've ever encountered always make this mistake about me. I joke around, I crack jokes, I do all that, but I don't come in a match joking and being an ass. I come in that match 110% ready to take somebody's head off. I come into that match like it's my last damn match. I come into that match like it's the last time I'm ever going to wrestle ever again because, God, in this business, your career can end just by the blink of an eye. And I want my every match to have, I want them to say something. I want I fight like it's my last because, God forbid, that might be it. Since day one, I started ever wrestling. At 18 years of age, I got baptized under fucking fire. Every moment. I fought like hell. I got my ass handed to me. Inside the ring and outside the ring. I had to show you in my own way. That you not ready you are not ready to handle me and you're damn sure not ready to be a champion yet and hell even if you were a champion you would have been played by Shazeen the very same damn thing I told you before Shazeen plays with people and she proved that she left you to the wolf and she told you, she owns your ass. And she's right, she does. The bitterest pill to swallow right now for everybody in the back that should know is that Shazine, whether you like her or not, whether you want to rip her apart, whether you want to just <laughs> dump her body into a river or something, she owns everybody. She runs this company. I don't like it as much as any of you do. Because she abuses her power like nobody I've ever seen before. But that is how she rolls. And Jordan, I knew firsthand that you can't throw money and power around to a woman that's got more power than you think. You see, that power you got, Jordan, that's imaginary. That's somebody else's power. You're borrowing. You are borrowing somebody else's power. You are borrowing your daddy's name, your daddy's legacy, your daddy's fortune. You're borrowing from him. You haven't made a legacy. I made my career. I took my bumps. I took my beatings. I took my dues. Damn, I took my receipts and I cashed some too. You know, I made a shot about you last time before Gateway to Heaven and I said your daddy paid guys to lay down just so you would win. 
I remember somebody asked me, were you lying about that, Malik? Is that really true? Did, did, did Papa Sylvia actually pay off guys to make Jordan look good? He did. He literally did. Your father paid off guys to make you look good because he was afraid and scared that his boy was going to get roughed up by actual veterans. Actual guys who will rip somebody's nose off and make them eat it. But I guess with that being said, what's, what's, what else? What's next for me? What else can I do? Because honestly, I think this is it. I know that I'm kind of not giving Jordan the benefit of the doubt, but I'm not giving him anything. Because I think this is the last time, the first and the last time I think I'm through. I got nothing to prove to Jordan. So Jordan, how about this? I go on with my life. You tend to those injuries. You think about the lesson I taught you, and hopefully it sinks in. Because I got bigger and better things to do. And that is to make my mark here in DCA. As that lovable, goofy, young, black, violent man that Wait I Wait a minute! Wait be. a minute! Jordan Sylvia from behind! Jordan Sylvia from behind with a cheap shot! I'm Malik Brown, what the hell? I thought he was injured. I thought he was in the hospital. What is Jordan Sylvia doing here? And now he's taking it to Malik Brown now, on the outside. Jordan Sylvia in a rage. I've never seen him like this. Jordan Sylvia, who lost to Malik at Gateway to Heaven. And now, oh no. Wait a minute, Jordan, come on now. Jordan. Jordan's putting... Oh, no. Wait a minute. What is he doing? Jordan is... Oh, no. Oh, no. Not this. Not this. No, Jordan. No. Oh, my God. And that was the attack that I had told you about earlier in the show. Malik Brown just coming out to speak his mind. And then all of a sudden, here comes Jordan Sylvia from the crowd and assaults him from behind. And at DCA All or Nothing, they will face off against each other. But I'm going to read down the rest of the card for you as well because it's a packed, jam-packed show. Amber Stevens will get her shot at Shazine, but only if she beats Delia one-on-one. -on -one. But if Amber loses, she will be fired from the company for good. Can Amber do it one more time? That is what we're going to find out at all or nothing also xavier will go one-on-one -on -one with tyler parks for the gateway to heaven briefcase can tyler keep xavier away from revelations or will the change still be there alika lynch will face sierra knight for the dca women's championship can Sierra keep her title? That's the question. Malik Brown, this is what I told you about. Malik Brown will face Jordan Sylvia one more time, except this time it's going to be in a 20 minute, no holds barred Iron Man match. And then the main event, John Black Rose will defend the DCA world title against Jacob Cross. And that is going to be an explosive main event that is the huge card for the last the next to last cpv of the season all or nothing coming up in just a few days or a week can't wait for it but ladies and gentlemen coming up next after this break destiny title on the line kenshin gets his one-on-one -on -one shot with mr amazing Let's do the show. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and this is our main event. The Destiny Championship is on the line. Alexander Washington will go one-on-one -on -one tonight with Kenshin. This match has been a long, long time coming for this man, Mr. Amazing, because he's been ducking and dodging Kenshin at every single go. We remember back at Gateway to Heaven, Kenshin was in a triple threat match with Sol Del Oro and Alexander for the Destiny title. Kenshin was not pinned on that night. Sol Del Oro was. Kenshin is going to get his one-on-one -on -one opportunity right now against this man, Mr. Amazing, for that Destiny championship that he has held. Alexander has held that title for months now. But tonight, it's not about that. Tonight, it's about those two getting in the ring and seeing who the better man is. And here comes his opponent, Kenshin, who I am sure is still wondering what would have happened back all the way at takedown 20 if he was not screwed out of the Destiny Championship. Because let's face it, people, he had that title match. It was announced as a title match. Kenshin beat Alexander, and then Shazin came out and said that it wasn't a championship match. And Kenshin has felt like he is the rightful DCA Destiny Champion ever since then and that he shouldn't have had to go through hoops to be the champion and I agree with him he was the rightful champion on that night and he was t it was taken away from him just as quickly as he won the thing and now thanks to Shazin he's got to go through all these hoops just to make it but tonight no there's nothing Shazin can do she's, al she's already left the building the, ch the rest of the change aren't here tonight so it's just Kenshin and Alexander one-on-one -on -one for the Destiny title here tonight on Takedown Episode 26. Kenshin getting his opportunity, getting his shot against that man, Mr. Amazing, for the Destiny title. This is only the second time that the Destiny Championship has been defended on Takedown. But it is going to be one heck of a main event, that's for sure. And Kenshin doesn't have to worry about the rest of the change getting involved. He doesn't have to worry about Shazin stripping him of the belt right after he wins it. If he wins it, it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm loving the odds of Kenshin right now. Because if he beat Alexander once, I know for an absolute fact he's going to beat him again. And here we go, main event time on takedown. Kenshin and Mr. Amazing one-on-one -on -one for the Destiny title. And look at Alexander. Showing off as usual. Telling Kenshin to bring it. But I don't think that's a wise move. As you see here, Kenshin now coming in with the strikes and the chop and more strikes and a kick. Kenshin very experienced in the ring. Well known in TCW Asterix as well. Oh, what a forearm. So he has a lot of experience under his belt and a lot more than Alexander. That's for sure. Nice clothesline in the corner. So Kenshin has the experience edge in this match. Let's not take anything away from Mr. Amazing right now. Because he has done it on his own before. And wait a minute, look at that! Pulling him right off the apron. Kenshin's not going to have any of that tonight. He is going to go straight into the ring. He wants to beat him in the ring where he is experienced in the wrestling department. He does not want to take this outside. As you see him now, float over, suplex into the pin, but only gets one. Mr. Amazing has done it before 
I'm not going to take that away from him. He did it at Redemption. He did it at Crossroads. But can he do it again tonight in this match where there isn't any change interference? There isn't Shazeen to go and try and screw anybody. This is one-on-one. -on -one. Nice bat drop. And Kenshin realizes that. Kenshin knows it's only one-on-one -on -one tonight. So he's going to do everything it takes to take that title away from Mr. Amazing. But Alexander's not going down without a fight here. No! Power slam reversal. That could be it. One, two, and a kick out. Mr. Amazing, like I said, has held that championship for a number of months now. Ever since he won it, thanks to the changes of help at a live event a number of months ago. And Kenshin is going to try everything in his arsenal to keep Alexander down like that Insiguri. One, two, no. Because he realizes that Mr. Amazing has been champion for a very, very long time. And he wants to take that title from him. And uh-oh, this could be it here. And down goes Alexander. That could have been the finishing blow. Kenshin moving him away from the ropes to the center of the ring. This could be it. New Destiny Champion right now. No. Kenshin, I thought I had the match won, but Alexander kicking out of that. And Kenshin now going to the top rope here. Oh, he went for a fist drop, but Alexander got out of the way. And now here comes where Alexander is dangerous. When he gets in on a roll like this, it's sometimes hard to stop him. That, I can admit with a fact. But Kenshin, the neck breaker. Cover again. One, two, no. Alexander has been stopped on every exchange by Kenshin in this match. These two know each other so well already. So they can pretty much predict where the, what the others are going to do before they do it. Alexander, smart in the ring, that is for sure. They don't call him Mr. Amazing for nothing. But Kenshin is amazing in his own right too. Again, Alexander staying in it. And Alexander now, oh, look at that. Didn't expect that from Mr. Amazing. but And now, huge elbow drop. And now um, he's still on the assault here. Mr. Amazing just leveling into Kenshin now. He knows he's got to keep on him if he's going to keep that Destiny Championship in his possession and in the changes possession. And if you think about it, if Alexander loses this match, it's going to prove Shazine wrong about everything that she said in that statement, about everything that she said about the change and how these other leagues are nowhere in their level. And now a blockbuster from the top rope. This could be it for Kenshin right now, but only getting a one count. And that has got to make Alexander frustrated. And Kenshin could take that frustration and use it to his advantage. Luthes press right there. Now Kenshin again going up to the top rope, calling up Mr. Amazing, looking for something. I don't know what. Uh-oh, but he was going for something there, but he got caught with a powerbomb instead. And that could have been the last gasp of air, but again, only a one count. And a huge chop on the run. And Kenshin now, again, going for this stunner. And Kenshin could be one move away from ending this match. Setting up, no, DDT. Kenshin now. Oh, no, went for something there, but Alexander getting out of it. And now look at this. Look at this. Oh, that signature gut buster from Alexander. But again, Kenshin getting out at one. Crucifix pin, no count. Alexander has got to be getting frustrated here. Every time he's been, went for a pin in this match, Kenshin has either gotten out at one or has gotten out before the ref can even make a count. And now again caught with a backdrop. 
and Kenshin again now signaling for the end. I mean, I don't think Alexander can even. Oh, oh look at this. Here we go. Kenshin, huge pile driver. That's it for Alexander. We have a new Destiny Champion. No! And now Alexander again. Alexander now, look at this. Fisherman suplex with the bridge. One, two, kick out. That is the first two count that he has made in this match. And now Northern Lights suplex. One, two, and again a kick out. Like I said, Mr. Amazing, oh, a straight kick to the head. And now he's calling him up maybe for the Amazing DDT. Can he get him here? Hooking him up. Kenshin out of it quickly. Kenshin DDT. Running in quickly. Pinfall. New champion. Two. No. Kenshin now sending him hard into the corner. And now Kenshin again signaling that the end could be near for Mr. Amazing. Mr. Amazing. And look. Wait, Kenshin looking at the apron for looking on the corner for something. I don't know what. Oh! And Alexander taking advantage. I think. I don't know if Kenshin thought that he saw one of the change members coming from the back or what, but. And uh oh. And look at Alexander taking out the that turnbuckle pad, but it may not matter at this point. Kenshin now, power slam. Like I said, Mr. Amazing is in trouble here. DDT again. I don't think Mr. Amazing has any idea of how in trouble is. There it is. There it is. Sit down, Powerbomb. New champion right now. One, two, no. How is Alexander still in it? And now Kenshin. Going up to the top row, Kenshin. There's that Hurricane Ronnie was trying for earlier. That could be it there. One, two, no! Alexander Washington, I'll give the guy credit. He has been in this thing and now rolling quickly to the outside. But no, he's no! I was going to say he's not safe, but looks like he is at this point. He crashed hard to the floor and Alexander... Looking to take advantage of this. But now he runs into the atomic drop. And now fall over. Net breaker. I'm telling you, Mr. Amazing has not looked so amazing in this match at all. Another DDT. And now he's looking to set up the end now. This is all she wrote right here. Another one. Another sit down power bomb, and that is it. Two in this match. That is it. One, two, no. Kenshin has hit everything at Alexander, and Alexander is still kicked out. Kenshin has got to be frustrated in his own right. And now Kenshin, I mean, I, I, Kenshin has got to be frustrated at this point. Kenshin now trying to go on the outside, a huge ax handle. And now Kenshin, he's letting his frustration get the best of him here into the ring stairs. Kenshin has thrown everything at Alexander, and Alexander, by the grace of his own two feet, by the grace of God himself, is still in this match. And now, again into the other ring steps. And now, see, like I said, Kenshin, come on. You have the match won. You just had to hit him with the boot to head technique, and you got the match won. But Alexander taking advantage of Kenshin's frustrations. That is what Alexander knows best how to do. And now the amazing leg sweep. Alexander. Oh, no. 
Wait a minute, Kenshin now. The boots a head technique. That's it. He's got to get him in the ring, though. He's got to get him in the ring. Alexander's knocked out cold, and Kenshin throwing Alexander back inside the ring. Kenshin, though, trying to regain his composure on the outside. What? What the? What? How? Wait a minute. That's Robert Tanner. That's Robert Tanner. The real Canadian throwback. What is he doing here? What is he doing here? Oh, my God. What the? How? Are you kidding me? Robert Tanner, he hasn't even debuted yet. And he just he just laid out. Kenshin through the table. Alexander, I don't think the referee even noticed what happened. And now Alexander dragging Kenshin. What? No, you can't be serious. You cannot be serious about this. And look at Alexander gloating. I don't even think he knows what just happened. Alexander, one boot to the head. Kitchen's out of it. Kitchen is out of it here. And now Alexander calling him up. You gotta be kidding me. You have gotta be kidding me here. The amazing DDT. Are you serious? Are you serious about this? No. What? I. Are you kidding me? Robert Tanner has just cost Kitchen the Destiny Championship. Kitchen's been screwed again. And Alexander, by the great by the skin of his teeth, barely walks out of this arena with the DCA Destiny Championship. But why did Robert Tanner come out here? Why now? Why did he choose Kitchen? What was the purpose of that? What was the meaning of it? But ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we got. This is D1. I'll see you at all or nothing. Good night.